Okay, let's look at this question. It says, suppose you are using total internal reflection to make an efficient corner reflector, oh, the kind that you use in binoculars. I think your textbook has a picture of that. So, okay, uh, let's just, uh, just think about it. Um, so just uh, to draw a correct uh, figure of corner reflector, it would look something like this. You got a, a side that's meant for a normal incidence, side that's meant for also normal incidence, and then you have this oblique side. And in a normal operation, what you would have is um, incoming light that going through the first surface wouldn't really be deflected because it's coming in at 90 degrees. Now, on this uh, second side is where it's saying if there's air outside, so, you know, air here, and the instant angle is 45 degrees. It's telling you that this side has been made to such an um, angle so that this angle here is, uh, let's call it theta. And the way it's supposed to work is this light is then reflected off over here and goes that way. And this would be more efficient than if this was a, a metal mirror, which always has some losses. But this kind of corner reflector, it's a theoretical efficiency is 100% energy in, energy out. So it's saying, what must be the minimum index or refraction of the material from which the reflector is made? Yeah. So this is where you do think through the scenario. So this material, it's going to have some index of refraction. Let's call it N for now. In And in air, the index of refraction of air is 1. We'll just use that. And um, so you imagine the light ray coming from some other angle then you know, it will uh, refract through, although maybe not that angle. Coming from other angle like here, it would refract through, it wouldn't undergo total internal reflection. So the scenario that gives the critical angle for this uh, total internal reflection is the scenario where if this ray of light, if it had refracted, it would refract along the surface. So you know, you have this angle here, theta, and this outgoing angle would be at 90 degrees. That's the scenario you are looking for. So let's write down the uh, relationship that corresponds to the situation using Snell's law. So using Snell's law, we can say we are treating this uh, surface uh, between the media. So we are saying index of refraction from instant side and times the sine of theta. We are saying that's going to be equal to the um, expression given from the conditions outside. Index of refraction of air, 1 times sine of the, where it's barely about to go out. This is called the evanescent wave, by the way. There are some applications, examples. In any case, we are saying the outgoing angle is 90 degrees. This uh, whole thing is conveniently equal to 1. So for this angle here, which we call critical angle, this uh, critical angle is given by this divided by n, oh, and put that through arc psi. Now, if you are solving for a critical angle, that would be what you do. Don't think we are, yeah, we are not crit solving for critical angle. We are looking for minimum index of refraction. So we do the other thing. We solve for n. So solving this for n, we get n is equal to 1 divided by sine of theta critical. Oh, yeah, so uh, I think that's everything. Let me just plug in the numbers. I have uh, 1 divided by sine of, and the critical angle for minimum index of refraction material would be 45 degrees. Uh, if your critical angle is, I think, a smaller, that means index of refraction can be closer to 1. Uh, so, so that's uh, it, and the answer is... Uh, square root of 2 or 1.414. Oh, yeah. That's uh, fairly doable. That's uh, higher than most glass, or that's lower than most glasses. So, m making this corner reflector out of a glass, you can easily get 100% uh, uh, reflection at 45 degrees. So, yeah, that's it.